As the name implies, the HP LaserJet 4000 is the next generation of outstanding printers from Hewlett Packard. The performance and features of the LaserJet 4000 are significant in several ways. First, the 4000 series printer is available in four models. The base unit comes with a 500 sheet paper tray and four megabytes of memory. The 4000T has the same memory but has two 250 sheet paper trays. The 4000N has HP's newest network EIO card and more memory. The last model, the 4000TN, combines the features of the other models. The new printer's major features are speed, print quality, and flexibility. The engine produces 16 pages per minute. The printer's instant-on fuser provides a faster printer warm-up and a quicker time to first page out. When not printing, the instant-on fuser consumes no power. The printer's formatter has a 100 MHz RISC processor and gives you the fastest image processing to date. HP's new JetDirect EIO, Enhance I.O., is 40% smaller than today's MIO card and uses less power. The HP EIO standard is designed to comply with the industry standard 32-bit PCI bus. Fast and efficient data files are created by HP's newest printer drivers. HP's PCL6, PCL5 Enhanced, and HP's PostScript Level 2 emulation drivers are shipped with the 4000 series printers. Print quality is good at 300 dpi and outstanding at 600 dpi, fast res 1200, and pro res 1200 print resolutions. Fast res 1200 works with HP's resolution enhancement technology to provide 1200 dpi quality printing at the full engine speed of 16 pages per minute. HP's FastRes 1200 print technology manipulates image processing data to simulate 1200 DPI print quality with lower memory requirements. The printer's default resolution is FastRes 1200. With the ProRes 1200, the printer prints at half speed at a true 1200 by 1200 DPI print resolution. Capabilities for 225 levels of gray ensure photorealistic print quality. Ultra-precise toner is required to achieve 1200 dpi print quality. The toner particles are smaller and more uniform. The toner cartridge and the printer's drum drive mechanics have been redesigned to ensure a more uniform movement and therefore higher print quality. The LaserJet 4000 printer has three dim, dual inline memory module slots available. These may be used for upgrading the printer's random access memory. New DIMM memory can be added in 4, 8, 16, and 32 megabyte increments. The LaserJet 4000 has two EIO slots. These EIO slots increase the printer's functionality by allowing accessories to be quickly added. The HP Jet Direct EIO Fast Performance allows it to keep pace with the fastest print engines on the fastest networks. The HP Jet Direct EIO provides support for all popular network platforms, protocols, and wire types. The EIO standard allows for new accessories like a hard disk to be added to the printer. This 1.2 gigabyte hard disk allows for maximum storage of fonts, forms, and signatures. The disk also gives the printer MOPI, multiple original print, capabilities. Additional storage capability is also available by installing optional flash DIMM memory. Two sizes of flash memory DIMMs may be inserted into the formatter's memory DIMM slots. The standard paper trays adjust for letter, A4, and legal paper sizes. Tray 1 can be adjusted to print from 3 by 5 inch index card size to legal page sizes. Other trays with more sizes are also available. Optional feeder assemblies are available, including a 500 sheet feeder. With this feeder, the printer could support up to four trays. 
If two-sided printing is desired, a convenient user-installable duplex assembly can be installed here. If envelope printing is required, envelopes may be printed from either tray one or from an envelope feeder which is installed here. You can refer to your training course booklet for review questions as well as the service manual and this video for more information about the HP LaserJet 4000 series printer. Paper moves through the LaserJet 4000 printer along various paper paths. Paper can be moved from tray one to either the face up, straight through, output bin or to the face down output bin. Paper can feed from tray two to the same output bins. If your printer has a tray three or a tray four, paper follows the same paths. Paper can also be duplexed from any of these input sources. Envelopes feed from either tray one or the optional envelope feeder. The paper path inside the 4000 is easy to follow. When a print job is sent to the printer, the print signal is sent and the following processes begin. The main motor and the scanner motors come up to speed, the fusing assembly heats up, the cooling fan operates at high speed, and the high voltage power supply begins clearing the transfer roller and conditioning the photoconductive drum. The main motor provides drive for all the paper movement. Paper movement in the feed and pickup areas of the printer is controlled via a magnetic clutch, CL01. When all elements of the initial rotation are stable and complete, CL101 and SL101, which control the tray two pickup feed roller solenoid, are energized. Paper is then picked from tray two and fed into the paper path. The tray two pickup feed roller makes one complete rotation and feeds paper into the path. An active separation roller in the paper tray ensures that only one sheet of paper is fed into the paper path. Next, PS102, the pre-feed sensor, detects paper motion. The triggering of this sensor is important since it signals that the paper has successfully moved from the paper tray and is ready to enter the registration area of the printer. The paper then enters the registration assembly. This is a passive mechanical device that corrects any paper skew. Paper is pushed past the registration arm after all skew has been corrected. The leading edge of the paper is detected by PS103, the top of page sensor. The top of page signal is used to synchronize the image on the photoconductive drum with the paper in the paper path. After the toner image is transferred to the paper, a paper feed belt moves the paper into the fusing assembly. Sensors PS501, fusing delivery sensor 1, and PS106, fusing delivery sensor 2, signal that paper has successfully exited the fusing assembly. PS501 is located directly after the fusing heater element and PS106 is located directly after the fusing assembly's exit rollers. Finally, paper is stacked in either the face up or face down paper bins. Now let's look at the tray three or four paper paths. The paths work in the same manner as the tray two path. A photo sensor in each optional paper feed assembly monitors the presence of paper. Drive is provided by the printer's main motor, enabled via the magnetic clutch. When the tray is selected, a solenoid in the desired feed assembly is energized and allows the feed assembly's paper pickup roller to rotate once, picking a sheet of paper and feeding it into the paper path. A separation roller prevents multiple sheets from being picked. Feed rollers guide and assist the movement of the paper along the path. Notice how the paper passes through the paper tray above it. When the duplex option is present, solenoid SL701 controls a deflector mechanism within the rear door of the printer. During a duplex print cycle, as paper exits the fusing assembly, it is diverted 
and guided into the duplex assembly when SL701 is energized. The paper is guided to the turnaround area of the duplex assembly. When the trailing edge of the paper is detected by photosensor PS703, paper motion stops. The feed rollers are reversed and the paper is moved into the holding area of the duplexer. Oblique rollers within the assembly ensure that the paper is aligned horizontally. When the printer receives the request to print the second side of the paper, a second motor in the duplex assembly feeds the paper forward into the printer's normal path. Photosensor PS102, the pre-feed sensor, monitors the paper's motion to check for jams. Paper continues along the normal path. The HP LaserJet 4000 series printers are technologically advanced in their printing capabilities and are designed to give the consumer a state-of-the-art printer at an attractive price. The LaserJet 4000 allows easy access to its maintenance items. These are the fuser, the transfer roller, and the paper feed and separation rollers. Access the fuser by removing the rear cover, rear output bin. To do this, you face the rear of the printer, pinch the right side of the rear output bin, and release the hinge from its slot. Rotate the bin upward and push it to the right to release the left hinge. The cover is now off. If a duplexer is not installed, remove the left and right duplex connector covers from the rear of the printer by pulling each from the bottom. Loosen the two screws on the fuser. Pull the fuser straight out of the printer. That's it for the fuser. The transfer roller may also be removed very easily by opening the top cover. The transfer roller is underneath the toner cartridge. Be careful not to touch the black rubber part of the roller. Skin oils on the roller can cause problems with print quality. With a flat blade screwdriver, pry the right end of the metal shaft out of its slot, then the left end. When you replace the transfer roller, be sure the black collar is oriented properly with the open end down. Finally, the separation rollers may be serviced by removing the tray from the feeder. The separation rollers are located in the paper tray. Carefully pinch the release at the left side of the roller and slide it off the shaft. The feed roller may also be removed by pinching it and sliding it to the left. And that's it for these easily serviced maintenance items. Now we move into the complete disassembly of the LaserJet 4000 printer. When you've completed this module, you should be able to repair or replace all of the major components in the HP LaserJet 4000 printer. The usual ESD procedures should be followed. All screws in the printer require a Phillips head screwdriver. You should note that many of the screws in the printer are self-tapping. When reinserting a self-tapping screw, always rotate the screw counterclockwise first until you feel it click, then turn it clockwise to tighten. Now let's disassemble the printer and see what makes it print. Begin the disassembly by removing the covers. Start with the right rear cover. This cover slides toward the rear of the printer until it stops. It then comes right off. The formatter and the dims are located here. The toner cartridge must be taken out when you remove the top cover. Next, remove the control panel overlay and the control panel by gently prying upward on the right side of the control panel overlay. This will loosen it so you can lift it upward and to the right. Pry the control from the right side. Remove the top of the control panel from the tab and disconnect the ribbon cable from the control panel. The toner cartridge drive arm is removed next. Using needle nose pliers, pinch the pin from its hinge on the top cover. Remove the four screws which hold the top cover. Two screws are behind the rear output bin near the top. There are also two screws on the top of the printer under the top cover. Release the tabs on the right front side of the top cover located here. 
Then hold the output assembly in place as you remove the top cover. Now, remove the left side cover by opening tray 1 and releasing the latch on the left side cover from inside the printer. The cover will come free and you can lift it upward and away from the printer. Simple and easy. From the left side, you go to the right cover. Start by releasing the latch at the top center of the cover. Lift the cover straight up until it's free of the tabs at the bottom and the power switch rod. You can now pull the cover away. Here's a reminder. When you replace the cover, be sure to reconnect the power switch rod. The rear cover, rear output bin is the final panel to remove. On the right side, pinch the rear output bin and release the hinge from the slot. Rotate the bin upward and push it to the right to release the left hinge. No excess force is needed. To remove tray 1, move the two slot hinges apart to release the pins on the tray. The front cover then slides to the right and is removed from the hinges on the bottom. The tray 1 sensor arm cover comes off by firmly pulling both sides of the tray 1 sensor arm cover toward you until it releases from the shaft. Then, rotate tray 1 downward and remove it from the two hinges. Something to note is that when you reinstall the tray 1 sensor arm cover, you must be sure the sensor arm moves freely. In this section of the video, You'll discover that the order in which you remove and replace assemblies depends on which part needs to be replaced. It is not necessary to remove every assembly. To remove the formatter cage assembly, all the covers must be removed from the printer as you did earlier in this video. On the right rear side of the printer, you will find the formatter cage assembly. Transfer any EIO accessories or DIMMs if you replace the formatter. There are five screws around the outside of the formatter cage. Remove them. Slide the formatter toward the rear of the printer and remove it. It's quite easy. The output assembly is on the top rear of the LaserJet 4000. On the left, rotate the brass arm up to 90 degrees. Then, on the right side of the assembly, release the white tab. Lift the assembly up and out of the printer. There is a sensor flag on this assembly for the top output bin full flag. When you reassemble the printer, make sure the flag is able to rotate freely. Next, you'll remove the laser scanner. The top cover should be removed first. Find the laser scanner on the top of the printer, tilting toward the rear. It has a yellow information label on it. Unplug these three connectors carefully. Then, after they're clear of their connectors, remove the four black screws which are around the edges of the laser scanner. Please notice the black shutter interlock. It must be resting on top of the silver shutter plate when you replace the laser scanner. When servicing the LaserJet 4000, you may need to remove the fan. Here is the fan on the left side of the printer. Disconnect it from the DC controller board. Squeeze the latches on the left and right sides of the fan cover. You'll notice that a screen attaches to the fan. Keep the screen. It is a separate replacement item from the fan. Here is the printer's main motor. The motor is on the right side of the printer. Unplug its connector. There are four silver screws around the corners of the metal plate. Remember, when you replace the main motor, these are the silver screws which secure it. Once they're removed, you may proceed with removing the motor. The Tray 1 pickup roller is serviced by opening Tray 1. The Tray 1 pickup roller is in the center of the tray on the pickup assembly. Pull the envelope entrance covers straight away from the printer in this manner. Pry open the blue latch on the roller. The roller lifts out easily. When you replace the roller, be sure the pin in the roller lines up with the hole in the shaft. The right side toner cartridge guide can be lifted, instead of being removed, to gain access to the registration assembly. It's not necessary to unplug these connectors. 
remove the black self-tapping screw here. Unplug the three connectors here, here, and here. Remove the small silver screw to release the ground wire. Lift the right side toner cartridge guide off the printer. That's it. Finally, remove the five self-tapping screws and the silver ground screw to complete the process. Be careful not to remove this screw. Now you can pull the registration assembly out of the printer. The pickup assembly is removed by flipping down or removing the envelope cover. Remove the envelope feeder cover in the following manner. Unscrew the black self-tapping screw at the bottom of the feeder cover. Next, remove the long 4-inch screw on the right side of the tray 1 pickup assembly. Disconnect the solenoid cable on the right side of the tray 1 pickup assembly, making sure to note the way the cables are routed for replacement. Unplug the connector to the DC controller on the left side of the assembly. Remove the 4-inch screw from the left side of the assembly. Remove this self-tapping screw. There are three additional screws to remove, here, here, and here. Pull the assembly straight out of the printer. The paper feed assembly is located on the front of the printer. Unplug the two-pin connector from the right side. Be sure to note the way the wires are routed to the connector. You'll need this information during reassembly. The wires can be damaged if they're improperly routed. There are two black upper screws to remove next. When replacing the paper feed assembly, make sure to insert only the two upper screws. The two lower screws are for holding the tray one pickup assembly in place. This tab must be oriented properly when you insert it into the slot. The formatter pan is on the right rear side. Remove the formatter pan in order to separate the engine from the tray assembly or to access the gear train. All you do is remove the four black self-tapping screws here. Next, the three silver M3 screws come out of the printer. The formatter pan comes straight out and away. There are many components which must be out of the way to access the gear train. They include the top cover, front right side cover, rear cover rear output bin, and tray one. Remove the right side toner cartridge guide, the registration assembly, the formatter cage assembly, and formatter pan. The gear train is on the right side of the printer. There are eight self-tapping screws to remove in these areas. Locate and pull the ribbon cable assembly outward, then down, out of the way. Follow this by removing all the wires from the white plastic guide. Now you may slide the gear train out. When you reinstall the gear train, slip the tip in first and push the bottom in. This is the best way to do it. The delivery drive assembly is in the right rear of the printer. Remove this single screw and unplug the connector. The delivery drive assembly comes upward and away from the printer in this manner. That's all there is to this step. The final phase of the disassembly is to separate the engine module from the paper feed module. This gives you access to the engine controller board. Begin by removing these covers, top cover, left side cover, front right side cover, rear cover, rear output bin, and tray one. The formatter cage assembly, formatter pan, and two long screws from the tray one pickup assembly come out. Unplug the connector to the paper feed module on the right rear side of the printer under the formatter pan. Remove the cable from its bracket. The engine is removed from the paper feed module by taking out the single black self-tapping screw from the left side of the printer below the fan. You need to be sure that all the cables are disconnected as you lift the engine away from the paper feed module. You now have access to the engine controller board which contains the DC controller, the high voltage power supply, the AC power supply, the DC power supply, 
and the timing controls. Face the printer and remove these seven screws located here. Four black self-tapping screws, three in front and one in the right rear area. From the left rear, there are three silver M3 screws, one of which is recessed. Disconnect the spring on the right side from this notch. Next, the power switch rod is disconnected. Lift the DC controller from the same side as the fan by tipping the board up and unplugging all the connectors. The black cable route in the middle of the DC controller can be folded aside with the cables intact. When the board is replaced, reconnect and route all cables before reconnecting the power switch rod. The spring on the right side is connected to the notch as was shown in the disassembly. This final segment of the HP LaserJet 4000 video deals with troubleshooting. Troubleshooting is nothing more than a logical series of steps which are taken to determine printer problems. In most cases, the printer will tell you what is wrong. Always correct any diagnostic message first when working with the printer. Before you begin troubleshooting, always print the configuration page and the printer's event log. These will provide you valuable information on the current status and error history of the printer. If for some reason you're unable to print, you can display all event log entries from the control panel. See your service manual for details. Here are some general hints when troubleshooting. Always listen for fan and motor rotation when the printer is powered on. If you don't hear these sounds, something's wrong. If you can't hear the motors, observe if the stacker rollers are rotating. If they are turning, the printer's gear train and motor are functional. Observe if all the control panel LEDs illuminate at power on. The printer's control panel is controlled by the formatter PCA. Both the formatter and control panel must be functional to illuminate these LEDs. For paper path troubleshooting, use the printer's paper path test. This test will help you isolate any of the printer's many paper paths. For print quality problems, use the engine test to isolate print engine problems from formatter generated problems. If you suspect EP process problems, the half self test is in order. This test will tell you if the print image is being written properly on the drum before it's transferred to paper. The new complex environments of networks, multiple printer languages, and unique program applications often generate printer problems. Service technicians are frequently asked to fix the printer when there's nothing specifically wrong with the printer. Remember that all the printer control panel settings are overridden by printer driver and program applications. Please work with your customer to investigate a problem thoroughly before replacing any suspect printer hardware. Additional troubleshooting details are available in your service manual. And that's it. The complete process for the disassembly of the HP LaserJet 4000 series printers. Thanks for watching.